So in this last portion, we're taking a look at some of the films and videos um, by Ed Shostak at Rose Royale. And there's a variety of videos. And in the show, um, one of the things that we really want to try to highlight is um, something like this video behind us, which is Tina and Carrie. And what he's doing is he's interviewing people from the transgender community. And um, in a lot of his photography of his social practice, he will be the subject matter himself. The photographs are primarily of him, or they might be of people in, in an atmosphere. But what's interesting about his approach in the films is you can hear his direction um, to the cameraman. You can tell that he's hiring somebody else. And rather than just sitting in front of a camera and saying, this is my story, he's letting other people use their voice. And you can tell the instructions sometimes with the, the cameraman that he's telling just, you know, walk, walk to your house, you know, just, just get this, get this. But he's not being overly directive, but he, this, is, this is very intentional what he's doing. And um, he's, he's giving them a voice, and so that is, you know, essentially the work. And it's all about their experience with transitioning, taking hormones, and, and those types of things. So one question, though, just dawned on me oddly as you were describing this. And it's because you used the pronoun he, and I was just kind of wondering when the chronology of these, because I know they spanned a fair amount of time, but when he was, when, when w was it Ed or Rose doing the interviews, I guess is my question. It would question. be Rose. Oh, it was Rose, and okay. So it, that, that's a little hard for me too. So when I was first writing about him after he passed away, you know, when I first met um, Ed. Well, but also you did see him a lot of times when he was, not dressed as a woman, right? Yes, yeah. So, so that's probably confusing for you because you saw him two ways, whereas a lot of people only saw him as Rose. Yes, in my phone he was Ed Rose, like Rose was yeah. the last <laughs> name, so he was two, one and of the same. Um, but it was odd when I first uh, met him or encountered him because I encountered Rose, and it was very odd to refer to him as Ed. And then I started just referring to the pronoun based on what he was presenting. And I know as. people have different things you said, but different people who have consulted you who known him and and uh, knew Ed and Rose, or knew the duo first as Ed, and some people later as Rose. But I have had several people call or contact or come in and, and what have you, and, and they're quite much, very much just everything is her, she, Rose. Yeah. And so, but anyway, it, uh, it, I just was kind of curious if he um, was doing something different with the videos. but. What's interesting, though, is about what you and I, in fact, we were just talking to somebody about this, that uh, I think to you and I, this is not very much different than his, these sort of scrolls or these really long drawings that he works on for 30 or 40 years. It's this chrono chronicling. It's like, a, it's like a diary. It's like a, you know, a, rec a recording, a visual recording or an audio recording of... Um, inspirations, trials, tribulations, you know, um, just things about his life. But here, as you said, he sort of has turned the lens from him to, well, there was a segue. There was where he became the subject um, in all the photo documentation as all the different personas as Rose. Well, Rose portraying different personas in different costumes. Um, and again, uh, we didn't realize this until later in our research, this was also a vast documentation of just the photo documentation of him and his transition and him experiencing these different personas. I don't know if that's how Rose saw it, but that's sort of how it feels looking at the imagery and not having spoken to her about it specifically. But it's the same thing here. And it's sort of, it's this continuous deconstruction that he does and chronicling and, and documenting things. I don't know if that seems too exaggerated to you, but again, I just sort of see this as a continuation of something that he did in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, with each of the different types of aesthetic effects or work that he was doing in any of those decades. When, when you spend a lot of time with these videos, one of the things that strikes me as personnel, we, we talked about a little bit in the beginning when we first started talking about uh, the work of Ed Shostak was the type of person that he was. He was really good at getting you to open up. 
And I think it's because he had gone through so many different things. He's a very sensitive, incredibly sensitive person and could make you feel very comfortable. And I think, you know, what you see in these videos that are interviews, uh, some of them are very artistic, what's happening, the layering. This one is, is, is um, well, I mean, I, and then you see the camera move. But um, for the most part, it seems very casual. But in that way, he's able to um, really get, get a very intimate portrait mm -hmm. of something and a very natural and a very humanist thing. And I think that's something that he was, that was very, um, he was very, that he was very strong with in his interpersonal relationships. And I feel like the further we get away from the period that this was created, the more significant it becomes as a historical primary. Uh, I think it's interesting too, and I don't know, did you ever talk to Rose about these videos? Yes. Yeah. So what I'm curious is, and this particular woman's uh, is, a, is a good example of somebody who's just so um, kind of out there. I mean, just very open, mm -hmm. very comfortable, talking about very personal things. Um, you know, it's it just sort of interesting. I just kind of wonder, did Rose know this person pretty well, and that's why they picked this person? Or did um, was he a little bit more random in how people were selected. I'm just kind of curious. That, that I don't completely know the okay. answer to. I mean, I assume from the conversation that he, that, that he must have had at least some, some intimate relation, not physically, but as, as a right. personal relationship yeah. with, um, with Tina. Okay. And, um, but some of them are a little bit more casual at different events where he's trying to ask people, you know, in right. little snippets of what their experience is. There's one with Gloria Holsom where they're talking about uh, passing and the issues of passing and basically about, you know, we, we talked about this a lot too, but you know, for the, the context of this video, a lot of the crux of his work is contending with heteronormative kind of culture and whether he's doing that through uh, metaphor in his work or just, you know, just really mm -hmm. out in the open, you know, where right. th this wasn't necessarily, I don't think this has ever been exhibited or shown, um, but, you know, essentially, um, you know, the <laughs> um, he's, um, Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. I was just a little distracted. Um, yeah, because I can partially hear <laughs> the video, yeah. so you're kind of getting yeah. caught up. In shit. It's like, what? <laughs> um, but, but these, um, you know, th these are much more uh, direct, you know, and, he, and he's trying to contend with the issues, you know, that, that he has. Right. Well, th these are definitely uh, documentation, but at the same time, they truly are advocacy. Yeah. And oh. um, there's, th there's no doubt about it that this is intended to... Um, help educate and inform yep. <clears throat> that um, these aren't decisions that these people are entering into lightly. And it's not without considerable risk and cost yep. and, and many of them uh, not having insurance. And so uh, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, sympathetic, empathic, you know, uh, undertaking and, uh, and a big chunk of his energy to do this. Yep. Um, but who better than someone like Rose who's gone through it and, um, and had to have deal with these same issues. But the other thing with the passing is I think sometimes uh, since Rose came along later than some of these younger people, I think this gets into this issue of passing, but also beauty, which yeah. is something that keeps coming up as a recurring theme in a lot of these discussions is um, the, the aging process, and depending on when people start with this transition, they uh, can look very different as they age. And you can tell that's a distress to some people. And so anyway, it, it's just, it, it's one of these sort of things that's very eye-opening, and that's why I really hope that we can help get these out. Because as you said, these have really, to your knowledge and to his sisters, haven't really been presented formally. Uh, maybe to small groups, but it's probably groups like these people who already, they know what the story is. Yeah. It would be beneficial to get it in front of people who don't know the story. Yeah, now, now I run the, the train of thought because I'm thinking of the relation between several pieces. There's another video um, that's with Gloria Holsom, and she's talking about the issue of passing, 
and not only just the relation of beauty and being accepted because mm -hmm. of youth and beauty, because when, when Ed started transitioning, it was much later, so his relationship to conventional beauty is in a whole other place. And, we, and, and I was also talking about how his sculptures, there's metaphors for the space between being open, between being gay, between heteronormative and being himself. Well, and the screenings, the, the scrimming, and, and sort of this obfuscation, and you can, some things you see so clearly and some things you don't, and there's all these layers um, and interactions between different things. So it's like interactions within yourself, between different periods of your life, or between the heterosexual world and the homosexual world, which we're sort of standing to yeah. some examples of that, or the, the trans world. So he was always living in this sort of conflict, and, and I think the layering that you see even very early on back in the 60s is rife with that. And also the fact that nothing is a pure form. It's not square, it's not round, it's not purely rectangular. It's always got a lobbed off corner or it's got a bent or, sh or a rounded corner. So nothing's black or white, it's always shades of gray. You know, it's just, and I think that's, uh, there's, it, it, I think it's very um, emblematic of, of what he himself was going through all the time as, as Ed and then later as Rose. Well, and, and building off of that, what I, what I think with mentioning Gloria Holstom in this is the, the more heroic and courageous aspect of this final period is to uh, give a voice mm -hmm. through these people, through this conversation about this, um, making this lifestyle decision. Because as she mentions in the video, on the specific one, but there's a physical danger, you know, and, and a lot of these were done 20 years ago mm -hmm. that, that people encounter. And there's a, there's a place that's safe within kind of a club scene or something like that, where it's okay to kind of, um, uh, you know, you know, exist in this way. But then out in the streets in a normal world outside of New York City, um, it's a totally different world. And so, um, you know, I think, um, you know, this work is incredibly significant for that reason. Yeah. And the other things that, that are in this presentation also are showing a, a, this other sort of aspect, uh, pre-Rose, you know, of, of Ed's life where, um, but again, he always made an art form out of everything. And, you know, looking at, um, Again, photos, lots and lots of photos, um, professionally done, sometimes, you know, him just taking snaps of them. Um, but this, you know, this steam room, or created a steam room, it was done in a studio with a smoke machine. And uh, it, like uh, this guy with a towel on and sort of, you know, di doing different things, but as he loses the towel, it becomes more obfuscated. And all you see is just a little bit of his face or shoulders or whatever. Yeah, and this piece, if you're standing in front of it, you can, it's funny because you could see it sometimes farther and then sometimes closer you can make out the figure. You could definitely see it, but it's very subtle. But there's also, you know, there's an erotic side to oh, his Oh yeah, very much well. eroticism. And also just the allure. I mean, this is a, a steam room door in a locker room, in his locker room. And then down here, again, this Duchampian, this, this sort of, not obsession, but this uh, admiration of, yeah. of Duchamp. Um, and of course, you know, we've already talked about uh, sort of the leveraging the Rose Sylvie uh, um, name, but also the, the urinal. <laughs> this one happens to be attached and not put on a pedestal. But, um, but again, it's just sort of these sort of references, historical references. Uh, but again, always in an art way, just like with the text and language. I mean, this is all discussing, you know, these are all words he's pulled out of magazines and newspapers and things like that. Many of them were Xeroxed, and some of the ones were actually cut out of the newspapers, and those are the ones that are oxidizing. But, you know, just different words used for, uh, penises and erections and things like that. And so, um, but always done in sort of a very artful sort of flair and, you know, and that, that particular one is very like hard edge and then his, his uh, leather hat from the 80s and, uh, you know, part of the club scene. So there's, uh, you know, the drawings and, and just sort of this sort of, uh, you know, again, try to be, you know, cre always being creative and, and sort of um, having an erotic allure, but yet, keeping it artful, <laughs> you know, and uh, so um, it was kind of pervasive throughout all of his work. So, so parting so, thoughts. So kind of in conclusion, um, you know, I, I knew Ed personally. And so um, that really helped give me the impetus and, and push me to work on the show. And I really appreciate, you know, all of David's work because, and Richard, there's, there's a humongous amount of work that went into this show. 
But what I really think, and, and, and we kind of allude to it in the title, is that when you look at the early work, you look at this very serious primary structure, reductive, minimalist work, and then you kind of end with an interview with a, you know, a transgender individual. It seems somewhat disparate, but if you look closely, you see the threads throughout it. And I think that um, that is a good example of someone who was in the canon. He was, you know, getting Guggenheims. He was in the MoMA. He was showing these major galleries, mm -hmm. but then also chose to left, leave. And I think there are other artists like that, or other artists that exist outside of the canon that were continuously working. And it's a real pleasure to celebrate their work. And for those who didn't know Ed, who are interested in queer theory, who are interested in transgender rights, who are interested in expanding the canon to include individuals to reflect that, we really welcome more research and like to introduce them to Ed's work and Rose's work as well. And like we were saying, the three themes though that even though this work, as Isaac said, seems disparate, um, what was astounding to us and probably more, and I'm sure most artists are very much this way, um, and sometimes it's more prevalent, sometimes it's not, you know, um, and sometimes artists do just make complete changes in, in interest, but uh, with Ed, the, and then Rose, it was, um, it was that underpinning of core things, which was basically voids, negative spaces, and this sort of illusion um, or illusory space that you can create between these objects. And it wasn't like he was trying to be optical, like in the 60s, 70s, in terms of art, but it, it is how he, amazing how he could take a flat space and paint and make it seem three-dimensional. And, and he did that a lot of times by having it juxtaposed or near another shape. So you were playing off, and, and the negative space is what was making the reference. It's what was tilting it. And that was fascinating and how he did that, but you, and you realize it was probably a metaphor for sort of how he felt like he was living his life and living in two worlds all the time. The other thing too is how he deconstructed everything. And I think he was a master at it. And I think that's exemplary, is, is um, you see it in everything. Um, and what I mean by that is he would take, he loved floral form. So everything has a floral connotation or note or essence, if you will, through everything he's done in every decade, whether it be a drawing, whether it be in the photos, you know, or anything. But it was making, taking something literal, but still capturing the essence of it as an abstraction. And ponder on that for a second, and what does that remind you of, you know? And it just, again, it becomes a metaphor, and it, it, more metaphorical later, but it became initially code. And people picked up on it, and you got the vibe. You, and so there was the way he created this own language, um, but through deconstruction. But then he continued with the deconstruction and things like these films, and with the photography. So even though the aesthetic is very different between a columnar, you know, primary structure to talking to, uh, you know, transgender women, it's that process of deconstructing. It's, it's, the, it's the narrative, it's the story, and it's getting to the essence of it. And, uh, and after you look at any body of anything from Ed or Rose, what you are struck with is that essence. And so, and I think it gets to this tremendous sensitivity though, and, and this empathy that you experienced personally, you know, as sort of a studio assistant and friend, uh, but also, uh, as you see it in everything that he does, and it becomes even more so, uh, more obvious, I think, when you get into the, the videos. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, and we kind of welcome a debate or a challenge on that or, <laughs> or a refinement. But, um, you know, if we, if we would also be interested in other documents and things that people have and, and, and work to just either just get pictures of it or just be aware of it to further our own personal research, because not everything was 100% documented. Strange, I know, given how he liked documenting things, but, um, and there's, but there's quite a bit, but more is always better <laughs> in this business. So anyway, well, thanks to everybody, and uh, thank you, Isaac. Thank you very much. Thanks, David.